What's up, my beautiful Sagittarius? It's November, and there's a lot of things happening in November, so I am excited to give this reading to you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, you want to watch this reading if your sun sign, moon sign, rising sign, or Venus sign is in Sagittarius. You are free to watch. Um, so I'm going to be using this deck here, this Oracle deck, to basically get further insight on um, what your archetype is for the month using the Archetype Guide book by Kim Kranz. All right, so that's the honorable ancestors, masters, teachers, loved ones. What is the archetype that <clears throat> Sagittarius is dealing with for the month of November 2019? The archetype Sagittarius is dealing with for the month of November 2019. Okay, let's go do it. Let's go do it. Bam. This one is called the animal. All right. The beast, the wild one, the she-wolf. We are mammals. The hair on our chest and between our legs reminds us so. We try hard to deny our unrefined animalistic nature, yet through this archetype, we tap into power and direction. Activating the animal means reawakening our relationship to nature in the most broad and embodied sense. Drinking from waterfalls, roaring at the moon, opening eyes underwater, eating berries from the vine. The life force of our planet begs us to set down the devices, the constraints, and the social constructs and remember the warm blood that pulses through our veins. The animal longs for breath, food, procreation, and physicality. It wants soil under our nails and starlight on our skin. If this all sounds terribly unsophisticated to you, take note that it is said that when Buddha became enlightened, he roared like a great lion. When in light, the animal is vital, elemental, alive, and dances. In the dark, as in the shadow side, the animal represents savagery, pent-up emotion, and lashing out. Notice your resistance to the animal within. Where does it come from? What has it kept you from doing, wild one? The animal demands we get comfortable in our own skin. The minute you accept, express, and celebrate the physical body, you tap into animal energy. All right. And we are going to be using the Moonology deck by Yasmin Boland to get your Oracle of the Moon for the month of November 2019. What is Sagittarius's advice for November 2019? Expect powerful change this month. New moon eclipse. Expect powerful change this month, Sagittarius. Is. Let me find the new moon eclipse and I will start from there. So it says, if you want affirmation that you can achieve your dreams and get the desired outcome in the situation you were asking about, then this is it. This is a card of beginnings, and there are powerful energies at work, but be prepared. It could be quite a ride, and events now could even be jarring and uncomfortable. However, any new directions you take will almost always lead somewhere better than where you are at the moment. Whatever is happening now is happening for a reason you'll appreciate later on. A new portal is opening up, and all you have to do is have the courage to forget about the past and move through it. You're being put Back on the right path, there is nothing to fear. Attune to the moon. Never mind the past. Life evolves every single day. Additional meanings for this card. Yes, yes, a thousand times yes. You're being shunted towards your life purpose. Whatever is happening now is happening for your highest good. This is an important turning point in your life. The teaching. The new moon eclipses are among the most exciting astrological events. They herald a complete change of pace. It's as though you're headed in one direction, probably, be, probably being guided by your ego. And then here comes the divine, the goddess or spirit, to turn 
you instead to face the direction you actually need to go. Regardless of whether or not there's a new moon eclipse happening when you fold the card, it's a powerful affirmation of positive turnarounds. Okay, Sagittarius, so let's see what you are to expect for this month. Honorable ancestors, masters, teachers, loved ones, what do you got to tell Sagittarius? What are they expecting for this month in general? Okay, my loves, so we are getting the Four of Pentacles as the first card. Let's break this down. The Four of Pentacles deals a lot with being a homebody. All right, doesn't necessarily mean you're antisocial, doesn't necessarily mean you're introspective um, and you're an introverted person, although it doesn't necessarily exclude that. Four of Pentacles is telling you, Sagittarius, to focus on your foundation. Okay, the base in which everything is structured upon, whether that be the foundation of your home, your relationships, your health, your spirituality, your finances, your career. There is something important here at the very root and the very structure. For some of y'all, you might want to focus on your root chakra and your sacral chakras, the first two there. Because this is a time to strengthen it up, make it bigger and better than ever before. When I mean bigger, not necessarily mean something that exceeds what you can juggle and carry. But, you know, we're we've got two months until it's 2020. What did not work for you in 2019? What is November showing you this needs to be fixed? Before you enter the new decade and the new year so that you don't carry that old energy into this new chapter and needing to fix things up then. You want to make sure you're on solid ground so that you can coast into the new year, new decade, receiving the blessings with ease. Four of Pentacles. Check your foundations. What is not working? What needs to be switched out? What needs to be prioritized? What needs to be strengthened? What boundaries you need to help support yourself at this time? All of this stuff is important. Furthermore, the Four of Pentacles could mean this is a period for you to save your money. Save your money, save your time, save all your other resources that you have. Time is also an energetic currency. How are you using it? Are you wasting time on social media? Are you wasting time excessively with a toxic friend? Are you wasting time excessively with other toxic counterparts, etc., etc.? How are you using your currency to give you value, to strengthen that foundation that's going to help support you and give you back more than you can ever imagine? Right now, the four of pentacles also has an emphasis of the home. So this could be a period of time where you're cleansing the home. You're clearing things out for the new year or you're working from home or the focus is I'm going to be a homebody to save money. You know, I'm just going to center myself here. Maybe some of y'all are remodeling. Some of y'all are changing homes. Maybe you're looking for a new home space and this is requiring you to save. Okay. All of this needs to be paying attention, paid attention to. And we also have the Three of Wands coming out right after the Three of Wands here. I don't know if you can see it. The Three of Wands is about moving into the future energetically. You are ready for newness. You have the courage. You have the faith. You have the determination. You have the work ethic. You have the vision. The Three of Pentacles, excuse me. Freudian slip, three of pentacles, so you're also building, you're working on things, right? Communication, collaboration, community, networking. The three of, of wands is about, doesn't come without vision. Usually there's something bigger and greater than what you can imagine for yourself that you have not tapped into. Some great potential that lies in front of you that requires a leap of faith. It requires a great change. It requires you to propel yourself forward, which could be uncomfortable or scary in some way oh but the three of wands is saying you're finally ready for this shift you're finally ready for this change and it's also admitting 
it's also confirming and admitting some sort of major mature um, transition that has happened. Um, and so really what this is talking about is, uh, excuse me, really what this is talking about is you now going out there and grabbing what you most want. Saying I'm ready. Why have I been playing small, right? And this could be in the general scheme of things, or this could be also very literal in, in terms of something specific happening in your life. Maybe you're like, oh my God, I just realized this relationship is just holding me back. It's not good for me. You know, doesn't necessarily mean that anybody's doing anything wrong, but it's just I've outgrown and it's time to leave. The, or this family member, or it's time for me to move. Sometimes the three of wands is quite literally a move or a transition in an aspect of your life. And it looks like maybe you've been holding your back yourself back for some time with the four of pentacles, getting yourself ready, focusing on that foundation, focusing on what you really need, meditating on that, making sure your coins is ready, you securing the bag, making sure everything is ready, you're not taking any impulsive leaps. But it looks like in November, either you're making the decision or you're starting to actually take the steps for that great change with the three of wands. And again, I got to say that it is scary. I can't say that it's not scary because we're being greeted with the nine of wands and we're being, being greeted with the moon. See, I can't even talk. So look at that. With the nine of wands, it puts up a wall of skepticism. You start doubting yourself. Am I doing the right thing? Is this the right timing for me to do this? Am I just... Am I delusional? Um, it, should I be listening to my instincts? Should I be listening to my intuition? Should I be listening to other advice that's been given to me? Who am I to do this? What am I? Like, what if I'm not ready? What if I fail? All this stuff comes up with the nine of wands. And this is something that you have to process and accept and just go through the motions. Because even though the three of wands is doing the damn thing anyway, doesn't necessarily mean that they're not doing it acknowledging the fear and the anxiety that comes with that decision. Nine of Wands is saying, don't put a wall up on your blessings. But it's also saying, keep an eye out for shady energy. You may have some important truths come out. Like, oh, I didn't know this person's character was really like that all along. Or I didn't know this was happening behind the scenes. This has been hidden to me. Or I didn't know I really felt about this way about this, et cetera, et cetera. Because with the moon coming out, stuff that has been stuck from within is now coming up to the surface. It cannot be hidden for very long. So whether that means your own emotional process, things that you've resisted, your shadow side, that of other people, situations and circumstances, rawness is going to come out. And so with some of these things, you may be inclined to hide yourself. You may be like, I'm not ready or Jesus Christ, what's going on? <laughs> like not to scare you. It's nothing scary, but it could be a very emotional time this month for you guys. A lot of unpacking, a lot of preparing, a lot of work, right? But you're ready with the three of wands. I mean, the three of wands wouldn't have come out if it... If now is not the time for you. The moon also makes you very, very psychic, very sensitive, very intuitive. And it's time to really, to, to really trust that. The moon is telling you, you need to trust that this is not a time for you to be logical whatsoever. This is a time for you, if you're getting a particular feeling, an instinct, a gut-based reaction, a hint of something, really take that into consideration. Don't. Second guess it. Don't hold yourself back. Don't be like, mm, because it's there for a reason. It's guiding you. This particular time in your life is a cycle, so you will overcome. Let the moon be your guide. Pay attention to the moon this month, what it reveals to you, the different moon faces, what it reveals to you, what you discover, how you feel, you know, what you're picking up. Write your dreams down. If you read cards, if you get readings, write those down. Re-listen to this video a couple of times. Because the moon is very important for you. It's a guidance system. Drink lots of water too. That's going to help you clear out all this stuff. Flush it all out. It's very much a magnificent time. 
But this is what you can expect, okay? You may have some people hiding from you. You may have some people not wanting to uh, relay the truth. Not necessarily meaning that they're deliberately hiding stuff. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're trying to be sneaky snakes. It could just mean that, oh, shows you, you missed... You told me X, Y, and Z, but you also left out all this other important stuff too. Or just things that are being admitted. Or people may be avoiding or hiding you in, hiding from you in some way. And alternatively, you may be doing the same to other people. So all of this stuff is important to take note of. Let's see what spirit wants you to focus on so you can thrive this month. Honorable ancestors, master teachers, loved ones. What does spirit... What do you want Sagittarius to focus on so that they are thriving this month? So a message that I am getting is for a lot of you guys to check on your core beliefs. Check on your core beliefs. Like these are these like energetic imprints that are just, you know, lying in your psyche. Like. I can't make more than 50K a year or I got to be able to accomplish my career before I meet the love of my life or because my family has always had this trauma, then I am to experience that too. You know, these are just ex examples, but this is really a time to unprocess and depack what's been storing in your body, in your psyche, in your emotional body, in your spiritual body, and really kind of like, um, kind of like when you clear out your computer, right? You clear it out. It's Mercury retrograde, so you want to revise, re-edit, revisit these things and be like, "That's whoa! I picked that up from my mama." I picked that up from my grandma. I used to believe that 10 years ago. I don't believe that now. So it's about just kind of tapping in, tuning in, revisiting that, and seeing if that really resonates with you still. Maybe writing a personal manifesto, you know, um, doing a vision board, just getting yourself very, very clear that that's not who you are, but that's not the value you stand by. Those are not the ethics that you stand by, the moral code that you stand by. And rewriting something that's much more in alignment with who you are now and much more conducive to what you want to experience and generate and mag manifest in your life for the months to come and, and for next year. Okay, and also check your check your community. If the people that you are surrounded by don't mirror those core values in some way or, se or have similar values, then just know that you're being influenced by them. And why do you have them around if they're not kind of on the same wavelength or the vibration as you? That's something you need to focus on too. What does spirit want you guys to focus on? Sagittarius for November 2019. What do you need to focus on so you can thrive? Let's start here. You need to focus on the long term. Long term haul. Ten of Pentacles. This is about great abundance. This is about great wealth. So this is like winning the golden ticket. You got the juice. You got the juju. You got all that shit that can make you very wealthy. You got that currency running through you and it's just really basically whether you allow yourself to access that current or you're going to resist the current. The Ten of Pentacles deals a lot with long-term wealth, long-term abundance, not only financially but having all the friends, having the family life, having the health, having the creativity, you know, all of that stuff. It is a phenomenal card. The card talks about starting to look a little bit later on in the future. Five to ten years from now, what are you doing now that's going to reap the rewards to get you where you want to be a little bit later on? Okay, are you networking? Are you connecting the dots? Have you been planting the seeds so that these seeds turn into a magnificent forest later on and, and, and yield all of this delicious fruit and this fauna and flora and all that stuff for you? Um, ten of Pentacles is also about Again, kind of like your roots, right? Where are you planting yourself? Where do you see yourself where you're committed and consistent and grounded? 
whether this be in a relationship, whether this be in your career, your own business, whether it be in a personal practice, there's some sort of consistency or some sort of golden ticket here that is illuminated to you, maybe even through your purpose that is going to give you a lot of benefit and value, okay? For some of y'all focusing on family life, there could be a lot of rewards through the family life. There could be a lot of healing. There could be a lot of, you know, uh, connecting the dots in terms of, uh, your family really helping you get to that next level. And then here in the center, we've got the hero fence. Okay. The hero fence deals with many lessons. Many lessons, right? It is a card of education. It is a card of the higher self. It is a card of knowledge. It is a card of um, essentially teaching and being taught by the universe. It is also a card about institutionalized learning. Maybe it's a time for you to study. Maybe it's, maybe it's a time for you to go back to school. There is some sort of something that you want to invest in now in November, whether it's like YouTube classes or free workshops or what have you. Something that can really help you maximize on this Ten of Pentacles card here. Don't forget that you may also be a leader to other people. Um, and, and, and other people could be living vicariously through you in some way with this hero think card. It has some sort of religious and spiritual undertones here. So how is your spiritual practice helping you develop this well of wealth here with the Ten of Pentacles? What does your spiritual practice look like? Is it consistent? Um, are you committed to it? Are you learning and expanding on it? Um, and, you know, all of this stuff with the Hierophant, it is really interesting because it's just really interesting because um, we're, we're seeing this on a broader scale. So do not exclude learning from other people. Or, or using other people in ex as an example to learn important lessons in your life so that hopefully you can avoid that yourself. Um, and, and I think a lot of this also does deal with learning about wealth, whether it's whether or not, you, you know, and I'm, I'm talking about wealth in this terms of uh, financial wealth, learning how to invest, learning how to save, learning, you know, learning the differences in all that stuff. Um, learning from others that are doing it, learning from people who are excelling in their careers, because you, you've got the potential to make more than you've ever envisioned, and it looks like you're on the right path to doing so, and you've also got the potential to influence other people. You cannot discredit your higher self and your spiritual practice in regards to all of this either. Then we've got the judgment. Judgment's been coming out for everyone and their mother this year, this, this month. Judgment is that final call, that wake-up call, saying, hello, wake up. You need to accept the situation as is, not dwell in fantasy, not blame other people, not avoid it, not complain. You need to deal with what is. And sometimes dealing with what is does require some sort of action before you can get to the next level. So the judgment is like, okay, Something may happen or a light's going to be shined on you where you got to put your, your lessons to the test. You, you got to put your knowledge to the test. With, you know, are you going to self-implode? Are you going to react in a way that's going to take away your blessings? You're going to be tested this month. And you're going to have to use your knowledge to pass this test. And if you pass this test, bam, then you've got the Ten of Pentacles. I don't even know if you don't pass this test. You're just going to have to repeat the test over and over again, right? That's what happens. But it is all about this evolutionary cycle. We're just entering a cycle of evolution. Like, hurry up and evolve, okay? So you don't have to uh, uh, deal with the foolishness. So that you're one step closer to this grand scheme of a vision that you have for yourself. This is what spirit wants you to do so you can thrive. 
what areas of your life do you need to evolve use your community use your family use your roots use that sort of consistency what you've been dive um going yeah so what is it called what are you consistent in are you you are an are you an avid reader are you an avid prayer are you an avid, you do exercise. There's something in that routine that is going to help you during this time. And it can educate you. It can educate you so that you can pass that test. Also, you serve, serve the masses. Don't exclude, don't negate the wisdom that you have inside of yourself. You know, the hero fin has his back to the ten of pentacles. And it could mean like you don't really see yourself as a high figure. You don't see yourself... As, influ as influential, but you are, and you need to step to the plate. So I hope this served you well. Until next month, Sagittarius, blessings, blessings. Ciao.